Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. I have a question. Welcome back. It's the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens. I'm here with Andrew, the security guy. Welcome, brother. Hey, it's good to be here. Good to be here, man. Give me some. Right yeah, on. right on. Oh, Give me some. Another week. Some trouble. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, so uh, this week, um, so our, our host, our guest, canceled. So we got to figure out. Yeah, I hope you guys are over at UH. Brian Tuskin's <laughs> in town. He's the um, director of uh, global security operations for Microsoft. Really nice guy. I had a great show with him yesterday. Uh, upstairs here at the, at the uh, Plaza Club, um, we talked about sort of the future of the SOC, you know, and, and he was mm. giving us some of what they're up to. And then today he was over at UH, and we thought we'd get him in here, um, but he they they peg, tacked on an additional like panel discussion over lunch with him, which held him till two o'clock. So you're not going to have Brian Tuscan here today, but maybe next time. That's important that we He's should tell the guy. audience uh, the SOC, S-O-C, Security Operations, Security Operations Center. Center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're, um, important acronym. That they do all virtual on. SOC. I mean, she's, they, so you had a guy yesterday with the HoloLens, and so they're, they're all, he, that guy brought up their SOC in the HoloLens so everybody else could see what he could see. It was awesome. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's all virtual. Like, he was yeah. showing us what they're building now. Their next, their next version is all, it's just all virtual. So that's kind of scary, and it kind of gets into our topic of, you know, so you want to be a hacker, where yeah. do hackers come from? A lot of hackers are gamers, and we have a new movie that just came out, Spielberg's new one, Ready Player One. Oh, is that what, that, is that what it's, it's about? It's supposed awesome. to be in the year uh, 2045, and uh, all these people <laughs> go into this gaming world because the real world sucks. Oh, <laughs> so they just stay. <laughs> yeah, so they just stay in this uh, virtual world that's actually wonderful, and you can be whoever you want to be. And, and then uh, they're fighting for control of the planet because everybody's in this world. Whoever controls this virtual world controls the world. And so there's a revolutionary in, uh, in virtual space. And yeah, I don't want to give it away, but it's it's a pretty, it's actually a great movie, great story, and it's kind of prophetic. And I keep telling people that if you want to know what the future is going to be like, read or watch sci-fi now. Sure, go to the movies. Go to the movies. Uh, and the most random weird movies, you, you pick out stuff that's uh, kind of prophetic. Uh, Keanu Reeves, local boy, mm -hmm. uh, done things like John Wick and, of course, Matrix, right? But there was one he did way back when, if you ever saw Johnny Mnemonic. Uh, I remember the name of it, but I don't, I don't remember watching it. Uh, he's, a, he's a courier that carries data. He took out part of his brain and he put something in his head to carry, like a hard drive or something. But, but there's a disease going around the planet in this movie, in this kind of dystopian future, that's caused by radio frequency. Oh. Basically Wi-Fi. Yeah. And, uh, we and were, today there's, yeah, there's, there's, no there's an overabundance of Wi-Fi. In fact, a lot of people are doing voice over... Uh, 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 IP, mm -hmm. but in Wi-Fi, so they don't have to cable it. Mm -hmm. They're just saturating entire floors of building with as much radio frequency as you can get to get all this bandwidth so you can do Wi-Fi VoIP calling. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, personally, I think that's a bad idea. Eventually, we're going to run into something like this black death that Johnny Mnemonic had. I think oh, you this, think that from the RF? I think this could be helpful. Well, uh, there's been a bunch of news lately about that. Now there's there's SAS or something where they said big, big data, big telecom industries has been hiding the fact that this RF is actually causes brain, you know, cancer of your brain or whatever, right? And so and they were saying that 5G. I guess the antennas are going to be quite a bit closer together. A lot more of them oh, saturated. Yeah. So we're going to be walking around just bathed in. You know RF, and uh, you know probably what you're talking about is going to come true. You know? Well, the good news is that you know the microwave dishes that, that shoot this stuff all over the place. Uh, you know when they hit your body, they excite the water molecules and they actually warm you up. Yeah. So we'll be much warmer as we die. You, maybe that's yeah. where the global warming is coming from. <laughs> I wonder if anybody could try to call it. What's it when you look at uh, um, not causation but uh, correlation? You know what I'm saying? I wonder if those are correlated things. Yeah, the microwave just keeps playing yeah. it up by itself. It's not actual the, the greenhouse gases at all. You it's know? just microwave it's dishes. Just, yeah, <laughs> RF, you know. We're just heating up the air. And we're heating up the bodies. Well, sci-fi kind of predicts the future. And Ready Player One, I think, is um, everyone's wearing these virtual headpieces and, and going into the gaming mode. And um, I read two articles of uh, differing viewpoints uh, from assistant professors at two institutions. And um, they both are in computer and psychology. So they, they okay. do both, right? Which I think is the best way to examine this causality or maybe a hypothesis that these things are connected. Uh, one of these professors states that it is absolutely better to hire gamers to do cybersecurity. Probably. Okay, that's my first instinct too. Yeah, probably. But then I read the counterproposal. 
And this person brought up some other points. So let's go through the goods and the bads, okay. right? And some things are obvious, right? If you're a gamer, you're obviously uh, engrossed in technology. Well, I think you also like the challenge of figuring it out because you have to learn how to play, and you know the, it changes. There's new scenes, so it's you know I know that you replay it because you get you die and you got to. But get you're a board. problem solver. Yeah, yeah, right, right. By in your nature, and you enjoy it, right? You want, yeah. you like the challenge. So I think that's a good thing for. You know what else came out of the research is um, these gamers, because games inherently always have a path to win. Mm. Gamers know that. They figure it out. Not only do they figure it out, they never give up hope. Yeah. If not, they hack it. They, 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 Google, they Google it. <laughs> They'll Google it. There's find, a workaround. There's a key. They'll find there's a, a cheat. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. a cheat, right? Yeah, or, or they know somebody. <laughs> In real life, though, that creates the type of person that never gives up and says, I just can't. Oh, no. There's always a way I can script it, I can hack it, I can bust yeah. it, I can break it, I can hash it, I can do something yeah. to make this X function. So sure. they're problem solvers and they never give up. They always have that hope. And, hope. and Now that's not really a strategy though. Hope is just a characteristic of willpower. Let's say that. I, in my opinion, willpower is the thing that gets us by. Yeah. It's just the sheer will yes. that you will overcome yeah, whatever so you it is. Believe. Right, yeah. it's do or die, and and I think gotcha. gamers kind of adopt this gaming. Yeah, right. So of course, you, they get to get reborn too. <laughs> there's that's a little, bad things. You get extra lives. There's a little right? falseness. I mean, in there, you know, because they know if they die, they just. I mean, they don't want to start over. I get it. You know, they want right, to progress right. in the game. You don't want to lose your character. You don't want to lose your character, of course. <laughs> so in, in cyber, the you know the stakes are just a little higher, perhaps, right? So I mean, maybe. But yeah, I think the characteristics. <laughs> I do think the characteristics are are, are valuable. You know, there are there are valuable like ones. Uh, there's there's a counter argument. That uh, and this the, one of the things I disagreed with is this other professor from the Rochester Institute of Technology said that, uh, and she wrote for I believe Slate mm -hmm. online as I was reading this article, and uh, she said that uh, some of the characteristics that are bad is well diversity is one of them, and I thought, you know, that's got some merit. So when you look at the gaming population across the globe, mm -hmm. really, what do you see? What's the demographic? I don't, I don't use. The, the majority, not just the age demographic, but the 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 genetic makeup of these people. Like, what they, do they look like? Male? What's their national was origin? It male? Oh. It's almost all white male. Oh, is that true? The, the high vo highest volume of gamers is, is white male. So if you hire a majority of gamers, you could end up not having a diverse work population. Well, which, they do they not game in Asia? They do. Well, I mean, it can't be that there. It can't be white but, males is not the dominant demographic. or well, no, maybe, ma Males is the do dominant so, demographic. So you lose women. You lose women, absolutely. And that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. And then on top of that, you lose uh, the demographic the, of the, um, the people that really can't afford to go out and buy a PS3 or PS4 and spend all day on it. But they might be creative yeah, and solve problems in different ways. Right. You need, you need all those. You need yeah, all so those you don't want to lose. Have, if it's a, not a diverse population, then I, I'd say that is an issue. I mean, I'd agree with that. So you, yeah. But again, it's only a, we're looking at this tool of a gaming platforms as people that we could train to do cyber because they possess these skill sets. Right. So maybe that's just one piece of the solution and we go outside of that for other pieces. Now there's another point she brought up and this is the point I agreed with also. Um, she said that we should go outside because not all things in the cyber sphere, what you could do for cyber are hunting down bugs and, and tracking down vulnerabilities and, and uh, setting up a honeypot and, and reverse hacking. Those are fun things to do. Those are active things to do. But much of it, as you know, is uh, audit, yeah. gap analysis, risk assessment, security log, assessment, log file, log file review, um, policy generation, which is so mind-numbing it's better than a sleeping pill. Uh, I'd, I'd rather do those things uh, than do the hunting because it's just mm. less stressful for me. But a lot of people don't want to do that. It's just slogs and slogs and slogs of paperwork. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, my, my company on the side, that's what we focus on, yeah. uh, governance and, and audit and risk assessment. Uh, but it's kind of like being the, the certified public accountant of the cyber world, Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. If you go to the FBI, you got the field agents with a gun and the badge. It's really cool, and they're after the criminals. But then you got the white-collar guys going after, you know, white-collar Oh, and the like, cyber guys. And then there's the cyber guys, yeah. right? So there's there's different avenues. So you got to go out and, and hire those people. How do we find those people that are we be good at risk analysis mm. and governance and policy generation? Is that an English major? Is that somebody who likes to manage businesses? Um, 
Where do they find these accountants? Because I don't understand them either. <laughs> same, same group, maybe. I mean, it's you know, that, group, yeah. you have to have that sort of mentality. And there are those. Um, we use uh, the disc assessment, right? So you have your your dominant types. Like the, we we use these birds from. So you have the eagles, um, and then we have the um, the parrots, right? You know, everybody knows. I think they're the seas. They they uh, talk and talk and talk anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't, you know, they don't listen to anybody. It's a problem. Oh, yeah, okay. And then the I, the doves, right? They like to make everybody happy. So you have all these. You need all these personality types anyway. They're really more communication styles than personality types. And then you have the owl, you know, the wise old owl type, who's um, that wise. I think to me that's more that accounting type, who's um, likes everything in order. And you know, because accounting is very orderly. And so very. You need those. And you yeah. like you need those people to write code or to do. Code analysis, right? Because things have to be oh, correct. code review. Yeah, no one wants review, to. Do, they all just want to be the cowboy coder. Nobody wants to review. Yeah, no, or nobody wants to. to well, they don't document their code. That's always. The oh, never. They, oh, right? I'll, I'll document this when I'm done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right. And so there's, there's that. You know, so there's. I mean, you need all those types, I would presume. And I, I, you know, there's as many types of uh, attacks as there are. Right? People need. You need all those different types of brains thinking about how can they come after me where's the next hole and then somebody you know the guys that are just oh let's go looking right the hunter guys those are cool but they're probably impetuous and they're really? looking looking no. looking 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 you know whereas impetuous. the the owl the <laughs> wise old owl type stands back and goes now well, let's let's audit the, the the complete protocol stack and let's see where this could perhaps hide let's and, define our scope for yeah they, yeah they actually you know they, they do it's like a project so you know so, it's a project so you need all that going on right, right. i think you know i mean in in the, in the world of now that's security. the best way to handle security if you get yeah. um, all those different viewpoints sure then you can imitate all the different types of attacks well you get you have classes full. So how do how do you how do you divide them up? And do you try to put the different skilled people in groups, or do you guys? I do. The first question I, I ask so, in a class yeah. is, "Who's my gamers?" Oh, they okay, raise wow. their hands, and I spread them out across the classroom. <laughs> You'll put them together. <laughs> no, you never do, because that's the that is the clown college right there. I Those see. guys are going to talk and and hack and, and play see. games. They're the parrots. If you walk by them, they're playing you know the old uh, what's it, the first person shooter games online, you know Wolfenstein or whatever. Know. But if you spread them out. And, and put them in project teams. Mm -hmm. Like one of my network security classes, they do a security plan for a company. That's nice. the final project. They're, they're part of that team. Gotcha. So their viewpoint matched with somebody who, who's retraining in a new career. Mm -hmm. Who's going to look at the world differently. And sure. somebody who just came out of high school, completely different mindset. Somebody who just switched majors, mm -hmm. completely different mindset. Awesome. You put all them together, you get a really good perspective on mm -hmm. what could happen. How do we defend? What are our boundaries? What's and then the do, do they attack each other? Is that how you test them, or like? No, no. We have plans to implement that next semester. <laughs> We're going to have a virtual playground where we actually yeah, simulate a business environment, and we tell one team to be the blue team, defend this, sure. and the other team is going to attack. Nice. It's two different classes: network defense and ethical hacking. And you, it's uh, whoever gets the most points. So it seems, it seems like even in academia, you know, professionals, writers, people that are studying this and how to. What do we, because everybody's worried about workforce development, but in academia, it seems like the, you guys have a, a very good test ground, test bed already for this. You've been watching it. You're building teams. You're watching what they do, how they work. You've already learned not to put all the gamers together. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. You know, so there's, 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 some, <laughs> there's some knowledge that we already have gained for how to, how to put this stuff together. And so hopefully uh, some of that will start to, you know, matriculate into the working world because we need them. Now, um, I just had the IT advisory at our community college where we bring in business members from the community, oh. from the IT sphere, uh, the people that they do IA analysis, they, they do coding, they mm -hmm. do project management, uh, they're directors and CTOs and so forth. And we had about 20 of them in a room and we asked them, hey, what should we be training our students to do to get them into your organizations to make a good employee so you'd hire them? And some of the things, uh, and we had a wide variety of answers on this gaming. Uh, one side said, yeah, definitely, I want gamers. Just send me a whole bunch of gamers. They're great, they're wow. creative, they're, mm. they're exploratory. And another side of the room was, no, don't send me gamers. Because I, like I, like I was the saying, banks. you can't put any of them together. <laughs> Right, because they're going to make their own little subnet, and they're going to start gaming and doing, you know. <laughs> you'll see them on PUBG or Fortnite, you know. Well, I mean, <laughs> what do you, you, do you get that? some of each, right? So, you know. You've you got to have a variety. So that, that was the general consensus. You have to pick and choose and how to get the governance people. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break, and when right we come on. back, we'll do a security minute. Sure. Okay. Until then, stay safe. Hi, I'm Pete McGinnis-Mark. And every Monday at one o'clock, I'm the host of ThinkTech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. 
And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university, ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me, one o'clock on a Monday afternoon for Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And see you then. Do you want to be cool like me? If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at one called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there. Hey, welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. You are on the Cyber Underground. Dave and I are sitting here chatting. I got a quick security thing for you. We have a massive show next week if you can make it to Las Vegas. I see West is out there, 40,000 vendors hawking all their wares. Bunch of great sessions on really cyber and protocols and the, the advancement of the industry. Uh, the American Society for Industrial Security will be there. The Security, Interna uh, Security International Association will be there. A PSA Security Network will be there, and yours truly will be there representing Cyber Underground, Hibachi Talk, and Think Tech Hawaii. So if you can get a ticket to Vegas, come on over. It's going to be fun next week. Now, we're talking about teaching hackers. Hold on. Just a minute. You didn't pump up your new show. That's in two weeks. Security Matters on the 20th. We're going to do Security Matters <laughs> starting on the 20th. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Tell, us, tell us what your, Join us your for focus that. is. Um, security Matters. As if I've written the first program yet. We're going to... <laughs> we're, we're going to... Um, really, on that show, we're going to focus more on physical security. Um, the I forgotten realm of cyber. I want to. Yeah. <laughs> I want yeah. to bring. Well, we'll we'll definitely have the overlap pieces. Yeah. Um, I think I'll bring you in for those. Um, you know, uh, periodically, we'll we'll talk about that that intersection because it's a big piece of the con of the conversation. But there's been a lot of changes to the industry. There's been a lot of progress in the industry, and I think it's time to get back um, helping folks that have legacy solutions out there that we need mm -hmm. to sort of work on. Um, talk about those, talk about the new ones, help them. I wanna, I wanna look at some best practices for, for migration, uh, things like that. So I really wanna work, you know, cause there's, you know, we got a lot of, you know, not only have segmented vertical markets in the way that they use our products, but we also have different products themselves in the way they're being brought to market with, we got wireless lock sets today and just a lot of things in access control are different. A lot of things in video are different. A lot of things in intrusion are different. And the merging, the integration of those services has become uh, quite robust. There's a lot more happening. So we're going to get into that for a few few years and see if I can uh, generate some valuable content that helps the folks out here. Kinda. Good buzz there. I mean, when we're doing a risk assessment, physical security is a tremendously large and very yeah. complex portion of a risk assessment. And mm -hmm. the gaps identified usually go to an offshoot uh, another part of the management team for facilities. Isn't that something? It, it, you know, we're not merging the security teams, and I think this is an incredibly important show. I think you're doing a great thing. Yeah, we and we ha we uh, encourage that. Uh, uh, all the stuff I was doing earlier this year was all about that that actual. You know, we've been everybody's been talking about it for 20 years. The convergence <laughs> of IT and security. It's like really, like <laughs> it happened. You guys all just missed it, right? It's <laughs> right. But but many organizations sure haven't adopted it yet, and so yeah. that talking about that as well is going to be a piece of what we do. We've got to get the Get the culture changed, you know. We got, got some things. Not all technology, it's people too. So uh, it's important you, you hook that up to your website for your for your company so your customer can see this this is what we do. This is how we talk about it. Yeah, and we, yeah. we and I'm you know, we're we're chartered to uh, our vision is um, leading Hawaii to a safer place. So communication and education is a big piece of what we do. And I've been doing a lot of cyber work, as you know, and doing uh, um, uh, on Hibachi Talk, we have have a lot of different topics which have been really fun, but it's time to focus some, I think, some information for a while on uh, on, on physical security. So Security Matters, Fridays at 10, right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join and then me. YouTube, you'll have your own channel. So you can just look up I Security guess so. Matters with a Z, and you'll have your own channel. Actually, we're going to go, I think we're going to go Security Matters colon Hawaii. Colon Hawaii. Yeah, okay. that way it'll be, make, be a little more relevant. Well, don't forget to tell people that on your show next week <laughs> so they know how to find your show on YouTube, because every day that we finish our episodes, we, we have a great elect, uh, staff here that just uploads everything to yeah, isn't that awesome? uh, YouTube. Yeah, it's fantastic. And it's all ordered the right way, and you can see every episode. So I personally love that. People don't have time to watch my show in the middle of a work day. So they don't? Yeah, no. They just go on YouTube whenever. They're not watching this now? Uh, no. If they're like <laughs> us, they own businesses, and they work till 2 in the morning, then they watch then the they show. Watch 
Yeah, they, 2 a.m. They, they, when they're That's done. That's when I say, watch it. I got to see what Dave did today. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. Oh, so let's go back to um, the... Um, you start we grow so a hacker. You, so you want to be a hacker, right? You want to be a hacker. Gaming actually sets you up, I think, in a in a good way. And going back to these two articles I was reading, um, the person who was the dissenting voice that we've agreed on a couple points from her uh, point of view, the diversity one was one, uh, and uh, we need more people that know governance and not just the uh, the active shooter type of things in cyber. Well, we need. Um, also, to emphasize that, that if you're a gamer and you're coming to this world, she said that she didn't see any, any relevance in having somebody who wanted to escape reality and dive into a game and forget about the physical world. And she said, there's no use for that. Why, why would you ever want to do that? My immediate thought was, and I, maybe you're thinking the same thing, that's exactly what you're supposed to do in the cyber world. Yeah. Because everything's in binary. You have to imagine yourself as in the matrix, so to speak, right? Sure. You have to put yourself sure. into a different reality and imagine all these connections, because you, you can look at a network map and you can look at uh, you know, Wireshark and, and, and see your, your- Port map, packets, sure. You can see packet analysis, but you have to imagine what's going on. You have to and you together. have to imagine what other people can see and how they can exploit it. Exactly, you know. it, it, it takes a lot of imagination. I think gamers have that imagination. Sure. They are willing to suspend physical reality and go into a virtual sphere, a gaming environment, and understand completely new rules. Mm -hmm. You know, sure. they don't follow Newtonian or quantum mechanics. They don't follow, you know, physics of any kind. You can do whatever you need to do within this gaming realm, and they learn what their limits are by testing those boundaries. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly yeah, what, what cybersecurity yeah, professionals supposed to do. It makes you wonder if she, if she, she must have a bad experience with someone who game or something, because that's a, <laughs> it's kind of an interesting position to take. That oh, yeah. you don't want them. I mean, the other, there's another uh, whole world that's quite lucrative out there called pornography that people <laughs> le leave the real world. And I mean, so uh, I, you know, I, I don't know a, anything about there's it. There's a lot of precedents for people wanting to escape this world and go spend time in another one. So really? I, is I this, think that's when did this become for, popular? Is this, I read about is this it. On, new? I googled it on Bing. I gotta Google it when I get to Bing. <laughs> uh, you googled it on Bing. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, that's I took that from Gordo. The uh, the uh, or he binged it on, on, you binged Google it on Google or something. I don't know what he did. <laughs> but um, but you know, I just think there's, I just think that 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 ability to get away. I mean, we talk about meditation. That's a great thing, and that is that is leaving this behind. I don't. I mean, I don't have to go occupy myself in another game, but calming the mind is a is a practice, right? So I I, I, got, I take issue a little bit with her saying, you know, that you don't want people that want to escape reality. I don't, I don't get it. It might be the kind of person. Well, she might be the kind of person in my mind that uh, thinks about meditation. And thinks, oh, that's hokey because she's thinking, oh, you're doing astral projection or something. But you're just calming down and listening to your own breathing for a minute yeah, and I, just that's putting so everything out good. of your mind. Uh, I tell my students a lot, they're very stressed in my class because I work them hard. I tell them every once in a while, just do your Zen thing, listen to your breathing for about yeah. 10 seconds. And when you open your eyes, the first thing you think of, that's the most important thing. Take care of that. Nice. And, and that's how you prioritize. If you can't put it together or write it down on a piece of paper, let your mind do it. Yeah. You know, and, and that kind of zen has actually brought people out of a really stressful place. Yeah, it's a and, zen cheat sheet, man. Yeah, right you've got to be able to handle stress, too, in the cyber sphere. I mean, yeah, that's, you do. I mean, it's, it's there's fast heartbeat, in sweating. That's, you're, you're playing a game, man. That's, yeah. uh, and the risks and the stakes are really high. The stakes are very high, yeah, and, and the, the whole team's depending on you, right? I mean, you right. Can, the business can get shut down. You don't do your job, you know? And, you know, we're both in the military. We don't do our job. People die. It was critical. So yeah. you, you never did not do your job, you know what I mean? And cy cyber takes a team. You know, I'd, I would hate to be the, the one guy, you know, like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's all on me. I mean, that's, <laughs> a, that's a little much. But, you know, you have layers of protection. There's things you should be watching, and you set up, and you... That's an important point. There's security is, is in layers. Yeah. We do defense in depth. Yeah, there's layers of security. So when you want to go from gamer to cybersecurity, uh, what I usually recommend people do is you can take a training program. You can pick up a book, and I recommend that. But if you just want to learn on your own, if you're a gamer and you like finding things out on your own, it's all out there. Cyber is free? It's, it's, all, it's mm -hmm. all free to you. Um, what I recommend is people download this thing called Metasploitable. Yep. It's a, it's a hackable virtual machine. You learn how to use a virtual machine on your computer. And then you download the other virtual machine to hack that, mm. Kali Linux, or Security Onion. And there's mm -hmm. a couple other ones, but I like Kali uh, Linux. It's a Debian yeah. distro of Linux. 
And Nessus. Nessus is Nessus still free? Can you get Nessus? Nessus is absolutely free for home use. Yeah, you register you it, so, you download it. It's a piece of that cake. That thing's to use. 20 years old, man. Uh, and it works beautifully. Yeah. And so you can learn how to scan, assess, uh, hack, and and actually uh, secure Metasploitable, so you can't be hacked. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's a great learning environment. If you don't know how to do it right right away, there's a, a website called Vulnhub. V U L N H U B mm -hmm. dot com. There you go. And you go there, and people will say. Here's the attack, and here's how you do it. It's a step-by-step instructions. Mm -hmm. and so you're a big fan of teaching yourself. I, I agree with I'm that. Super big what, fan. What, of what do you think about the having the structured knowledge? You know, the security plus, and the what do you think about having yeah. some of that you know, knowing the cybersecurity framework? What do you think that plays in? Do you think that's more managerial? No, um, actually, I think that's complementary too. Okay. Uh, you can't exist in just the teach yourself world. You need some structured education. You need to, to find to communicate out. what you found. Maybe. Well, there's common terminologies. You have to speak <laughs> sure. the language oh, of everybody true. else, right? And then you go, you find out with NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, issues special publications of rules that you follow. Mm -hmm. Small and medium business follows the special publications 800-171, mm -hmm. 14 families, and about 600 controls. And these families are physical security, access control, mm -hmm. media control, risk assessment. Uh, incident response, and it tells you within there, here's all the things you have to do to comply with these rule sets. Mm -hmm. And it may be enable multi-factor authentication, uh, you need, uh, you know, escalation of privileges, escalation oh, yeah. manage, manage. privileges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. You follow all those rules and you comply with this rule set. And if you do business with the government, you got to comply with that. So. After you learn how to hack, you're also at the same time learning how to defend, of mm -hmm. course, you look, knowing what to look for, right? But then you go and you look at some of these rule sets and now you know why mm -hmm. everything you're doing is important sure. and how you're supposed to implement it. And then a structured education, I think, brings to bear two other things. One, the instructor's bringing his experience, his or her experience, mm -hmm. to, to bear, right? right. In, in community college, we come from industry, sure, right? And then you're also getting all the other opinions of all the other students. Sure. Like you said, there's Help, a diverse helping, crowd, sure. right? So you get to talk about these things, and that's important. Yeah. And also, I would uh, recommend you go out there and find things like uh, InfraGuard. And, Definitely. And uh, USCERT, or US CERT, CERT sure. the Computer Emergency Response Team, mm -hmm. or Readiness Team, mm -hmm. and uh, get the downloads there. It tells you all the daily uh, security threats that are out there. Mm -hmm. When to upgrade your browser all the way down to camera security. Sure. Yeah, it's all there. Locks, it's oh, all there. In theory, it's all there. I mean what's known. So I would, I would say self-educate because you have to be a lifelong learner because this industry keeps changing all the time. Super so you have to quick. keep that, go out and learn. But get some structured education too. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we teach it at community colleges. You can teach it, you can get it online at online universities. Mm -hmm. Um, and for the military, they get it for free. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, you talk and you participate in part of the community. That's true. There's find, find like InfraGuard's a great group that we have here. There's there's other people out here working uh, in the community. There's the um, Hats Kids and there's a lot of different Hawaii Advanced that come Technology on here. Society. Sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah, they yep. come on. So you know, once a month, call Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me a He'll call. Put you right in the loop. There's uh, Cyber Hawaii. They brought Brian to town. So give us group. give us ten ten more seconds before we go here about your show coming up on April 27th. Yeah. Eight, uh, we'll do the first episode April 20th. It is called 20. Security Matters Hawaii, and uh, we're going to be talking about physical security and trying to um, share some best practices and. Uh, Help folks out out there. All right. Thanks for coming, brother. Thanks, man. Appreciate All it. Right. Good fun. Aloha. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week with another exciting episode of the Cyber Underground. Until then, stay safe.